Greetings, and bienvenue, made crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Tell me a story, out. You guys have the best stories. Be me, 23, a shut-in neat, living off tendies and energy drinks. Spend days browsing 4chan, gaming, and avoiding sunlight like a vampire. One day, stumble into out, get inspired. Maybe this is it, I think. My calling, my escape. Spend next few weeks obsessively researching camping gear, watching Survivor Man, and imagining myself as a rugged outdoorsman. Finally, pull the trigger. Spend hundreds on top of the line camping gear. Tent, sleeping bag, portable stove, the works. Gear arrives. It's like Christmas, but I'm Santa and the only kid on my nice list. Set up a tent in the living room for a test run. Spend the night in it. Feel slightly adventurous, but mostly stupid. Days pass. Gear collects dust. Every time I think about actually going outside, my heart races. Realize I'm more afraid of leaving the house than I thought. Visions of getting lost, mauled by bears and having to talk to people. Tent becomes my new gaming den. At least it's being used, right? One night while gaming in my tent, I had a realization. I'm camping, sort of. Just indoors. Decide to take baby steps. Start with the backyard. Spend 10 minutes setting up, then rush back inside. Too spooky. Weeks turn into months. Still a shut-in neat, but now, with an impressive collection of camping gear and a slightly less impressive collection of backyard camping attempts. Weekend tenting with a group of Boy Scouts. In a woods, about 40 kilometers to the nearest town. Intel tells us that there's a Girl Scouts group a few kilometers away from us. Time to prank them lol. We sneak to their camp at 2 o'clock in the night, start making scary noises and setting off firecrackers. Mission accomplished, time to GTFO. Run back to our own camp and go to sleep. A couple hours later, someone realizes that one somewhat stupid and fat bloke is missing. We're now scouring the woods and yelling his name. We reached the girls' camp and the dude's there sitting on a boulder. Everyone was quite relieved. Be me. Live on Vancouver Island. Me, my buddy, his woman, and another couple decide to do the North Coast Trail. Three days in, camped out on a pocket beach of babyhead gravel with shitloads of seaweed lying around. Set up camp and enjoy some dinner and a bonfire watching the sunset. Starts getting dark, we've all been trekking pretty hard so everyone calls it a night. I stay up enjoying the last of the sunset and the sound of waves breaking on the pebble beach. I have to piss so I step away from the fire and switch on my headlamp. Catch the reflection of eyes 80 yards down the beach. Oh cool, a black bear. Finish my piss, watch the bear claw through these piles of seaweed and munch crabs for a few minutes. I don't really want to go to bed with it around since I set my tarp up just inside the tree line not far from where it is. Whip a few rocks in its general direction to see if it'll move along. It takes the hint, lazily disappears into the tree line. I can't really hear it moving around over the sound of the waves. Not sure which way it went. Oh well, what the hell, if it wants to munch on me in the night, there's not much I can do about it either way. Turn back towards the bonfire and tents. Catch the reflection of eyes again, this time in the tree line about ten feet from my buddy's tent. People are sleeping, don't want to yell or cause a ruckus. I don't want the thing around either. Pick up the most perfect round golf ball sized stone off the beach. Silently pray to Artemis and let loose. Perfect shot right between the eyes. The bear runs off faster, making a lot more noise this time. Go to bed, sleep like a baby. Absolutely gorgeous part of the world. We saw many more bears, eagles, whales and salmon, and even found huge whale vertebrae washed up on one of the beaches. I can't wait to get out there again. Here's another one. Be me, wildland firefighter, get sent to mines, middle of nowhere, northern Manitoba to action a fire that's threatening the only town within 500 kilometers. Split up our 20-man crew into groups of five. Hilo drops us off and we set up camp at four different locations on the fire line to cut line and lay hose towards each other to secure the perimeter. A big rainstorm comes through, fire dies down, not much left to do. Still stuck out there for a few days for reasons that are above my pay grade. Consolidate into two ten-man camps. Dig a massive latrine pit to satisfy the demands of ten grown men living on pasta, beans, and processed meat. A few days go by. One morning, the crew leader comes back from the toilet fuming mad. 
Whoever decided it's okay to leave used TP all over the place. Go clean it up, UT. If I can believe I have to have this conversation with a group of grown ass men. Everyone starts side eyeing each other, wondering who among us doesn't have the decency to put our wipes in the pit where they belong. No one cops to it. The problem persists. Next time I go to the latrine, I get about 10 feet from the pit and a furry brown streak comes flying out of the pit. A pine marten has been rooting around in our waste pit. Since there's nothing else going on, we have to take shifts trying to keep this menace away from our pit. The little guy wasn't scared of anything, probably never seen a human before then. Be me. Go on a biking trip with a friend on a long paved trail. The second day in, we go by a swampy area with lots of cattails. Friend is biking behind me. All of a sudden, it feels like someone is hitting me on the back of my bike helmet with a long twig over and over. I think it's my friend playing a joke. Look back annoyingly and see him swatting away a red-winged blackbird. We continue down the trail only a short distance and take a break, wondering what the hell just happened thinking holy shit. See a female inline skater coming our way. Suggest a friend that maybe we should warn her. Friend shakes his head, no, and smiles. We both watch as the blackbird attacks her head while she is continuing down the trail, wildly waving her arms trying to fend off the feathered menace. That day, we learned that red-winged blackbirds are very territorial when nesting and do not get too close. Good times. This was about five years ago. Be me. At the end of high school, I went on a camping trip in Canada with my buddy. We live in New England, and we're going to the Gaspé Peninsula in Quebec. About a seven-hour road trip to get there. If you want to have a sense for the areas I'm talking about, look up a map. It's May, so there's still a good bit of snow on the ground up there. Patchy at lower elevations. Enough that we brought snowshoes for the mountains. Pick-related. Not mine, but from the same park at the same time of year. Didn't feel like digging up the photos from my old hard drive. Pile all our stuff into my buddy's old Jeep Cherokee and head up. Some snafus on the way have to spend a day finding a part for the car in New Brunswick. Camp in a parking lot, it's all good. Get up to Gaspésie National Park. The north coast of the peninsula is along the St. Lawrence River east of Quebec City and not urban, but there are consistently houses, businesses, fishing infrastructure along it. The National Park is pretty much right in the centre of the peninsula along the one road that goes north-south through the peninsula. It's rural and wild. We see tons of moose, awesome mountains, and almost nobody around because it's not tourist season yet. We didn't really make plans for places to stay, so camp illegally in hidden spots around the park, on turnouts, river access roads, wherever. Just set up the tent next to the car and use it as a base for hiking, snowshoeing, and exploring the area. It's awesome. Nobody bothers us. One day I decided to drive around the east point of the peninsula. It should be a couple hours road trip, but it's a really cool coastline with cliffs. So we drive north on the road out of the park to the north coast, then east along the coastal road. Then once we round the east tip at the city of Gaspé, you can keep going south along the coast or go west inland through the middle of the peninsula, then rejoin the coastal road going back west towards the park. We take that route and go back inland on Route 198 if you're looking at the map. By this point, it's mid-afternoon. Forgot to mention that the whole time we've been driving, when we spot dirt logging roads going in the woods, we like to stop and go down them. Never know what you'll see, and the Jeep is four by four, so it's fine. Of course we find one of these roads and decide to go down it, somewhere in the middle of nowhere. We also haven't passed a car going the other direction in at least half an hour. The road looks like pick-related. Not my pick, not from the same park, just the way the road is periodically snowy. It's fine, we get maybe a mile up the road, blasting through the snow, no problem. Suddenly crunch. The last snow pile we drove into was hiding a deep dip in the road, an illusion of level ground. The Jeep is bottomed out. Get out of the car to check it out. Immediately see wolf print. I'm a hunter and know a coyote or dog print when I see one, way bigger than those. Cool. Dig for over an hour, put stuff under wheels for traction, nothing. Starting to get dark, we have all our camping gear and food, no cell service. We were dumb 18-year-olds, decide to go back to the road, try to wave someone down to help. I go alone. Buddy keeps digging. 
Agree to try for no more than an hour. Wait 25 minutes. See a truck. Wave at it. Doesn't stop. Right at the end of the hour, see another truck. Stops. Quebec Department of Transportation guy speaks no English. My French isn't great, but I explain, and he gets it. I get in the truck and we drive up the road. Department of Transportation guy tries to tow us. Tow line snaps, then helps us dig for almost an hour with the better tools he has in the truck. Finally free. He refuses any money we offer for helping. We don't even get his name. We go camp at a riverboat launch. Fun for the rest of the trip. Continue being stupid to this day. Solo camping trip in Central Texas. Get to the campground. They give me a campsite right in the middle of a bunch of families and RVs. Screw this. Find a super isolated spot at the edge of the park. No one around me. Set up camp. Get my fire going. Start drinking. A tiny bit of rain starts. Keep drinking. End up getting completely drunk before the sun is even down. Park ranger rolls up. I try to get up but can barely stand. Apologize for camping where I wasn't supposed to and for being so sloppy. Tells me he doesn't care, just says there's a big storm coming through and to be careful. Okay, boomer lol. The rain starts to get heavier, so I decide to finally call it a night. Lay in the darkness and rain and pass out in my tent. Wake up to the sound of water rushing. Think I'm pissing myself. Check and I'm not poke my head out of the tent. Guadalupe River is white water flooding over banks and is like five feet from me. Oh God, oh God, I'm so drunk and it's so dark and cold. Grab everything and run to the car and just shove everything in the back seat. Drive to the highest point I can find and pass out in the front seat. Wake up in the morning and drive over to the campsite and it's completely flooded. Haven't really been consistently out in years, but here's a whatever story. From the first time backpacking, going to university in Northern California, have German study abroad student move into dorm, instantly hit it off cool guy show him what america has to offer after some months of bullshitting we actually started to make serious plans for backpacking for spring break decide on catalina island his buddy visits for a few weeks for shits and gigs i'll fast forward since there's some other details of the trip but i'd rather cut to the chase third day of backpacking on the island and we just left two harbors, heading to Parsons Landing. Talk to some strangers, going the opposite way on the trail. Mention some old lady got gored by a bison a few weeks ago. We'd seen some bison before, but were at a distance and didn't bother approaching them. Hiking to the campsite, it's getting close to dark, but almost there. Walk past what looks like a near-abandoned large-scale camp that they most like used in the summer. Turn a corner, and in front of us is a big ass bison right in the middle of the trail, chilling. Big as a minivan. They ask me what we should do, since I'm an American guy. Head starts racing, thinking we should put our backpacks on the front of us in case it tries to charge at us so that we can drop them fast, or at least have some cushion if it rams into us. No clue if that was a sound strategy or not. At this point, it hasn't seen us, and we're just thinking of how to go around it, since it's getting dark fast. Peek back around the corner and see there's a bunch of brush we can maybe go through to go around the wide way. Bison has had its head down most of the time chewing, but at this point, it sees us and stops what it's doing turns its head and just stares right at us. Decide it's go around or head back to town. Screw it. We go around the bison while it's eyeballing us and stumble upon a large area that looks like where it's been staying, at least in the short term, since there's shit everywhere. Pray there isn't any more here since they usually move in herds. Keep moving and ready to run at a moment's notice. Thankfully, get back on the trail, keep moving some more, then take a huge breather. We were tired, stressed, and lucky we made it out fine. I wanted to take a pic, but I also didn't want that to be the last thing they would find on my phone if I died. Hiking Granite Mountain in Arizona. 
Didn't take a trail. I just started walking towards it. Get about halfway up and come to a relatively flat clearing with three tents. It's really quiet. Call out just to let anyone know I'm there so I don't spook them and get shot. No answer. Notice one of the tents is torn as the wind blows through it. I should have noped out at this point. Approach and see cooking pots left strewn about. Looks like a knife was used to tear the tent up. Definitely wasn't animal claws with how far the spacing was. At this point, my hair is standing on end. It's still really quiet and there's no sign of anyone. I decided to leave and continue my hike for another couple hours. Nothing eventful happened, I made it back to my car without issue. I've startled to question if what I saw was even real. This happened like 12 or 13 years ago. What would make these people just vanish and leave everything? Were they attacked and chased off? Was this a murder scene? Shitso break? About four years back. Be me, Lancashire lad, UK. Love me nighttime walks in the summer. No torch because I like the dark. Local nature park is pretty nice. I've been exploring it since I could walk and probably know it better than the staff. Go out for my usual night walk on a balmy June night. Tonight something is different. Feels off. Find my hand straying to the shitty dagger I carry with me in case of tweakers. Nah, I'll be fine. Enter the park and start to follow my usual route. Suddenly my gut starts screaming at me. Dagger is in my hand at point two pictoseconds. Heart pounding, eyes searching. Nothing dot PNG. Chastise myself for being a coward. Keep walking, but don't put the dagger away. Really nervous and jumpy now. In before LOL knife license. I would actually have embraced a copper if I had met one then and there. Get to the dip down to the river and I'm actually panicking. River mist isn't helping. I could swear I saw red eyes in it. Decide to nope out and head for the nearest exit. Climbing the hill and am in full flight or fight. About ready to bayonet charge any shadow that twitches. As I'm crossing the car park, the feeling starts to recede. Exit the park. And I'm only feeling a little nervous as I'm starting down the country lane. Feel fine enough to stop by an old quarry on the way back and watch the moon set. And that would be it. I would put it down to a weird nervous break except... Pick related is from the other end of the park. About a month later, gonna go do a stalker challenge at an abandoned building in the park. Put my kit on, full K autistic gear, the works. Bio, AKM, in a bag because normies would call the Rosas if they saw it. Walk into the park early and look for a good campsite whilst chilling. Come midnight, finally Shaw Park is empty. Walk back up the hill from before towards the building. Feeling nervous, but put it off. Suddenly, hear running hooves. There's a street lamp in one of the fields, for some unknown reason. See what I think is two deer running underneath it. Deer get closer. Brain fails to register the oh shit. This should be as him stood in the open and very obvious even in the gloom. Lead red deer vaults the fence and lands an arm's length in front of me before skittering off up the path. Cool, so where the secco the shit is that? Look over the fence to see the second deer slinking off into the shadows. That's no deer, that's canine. A canine the size of an adult red deer. Black and dark fur, nope, nope, nope. Guttural snarls and growls start coming from the dark. Brain kicks into overdrive. Bio is uselessly in my backpack. Pocket knife ain't gonna do shit. Running is not an option. My bag and gear make me look bulky and odd. Settle for standing there and making myself look as big and threatening as possible. Feels like hours, maybe only minutes. Noises finally cease. Feel slightly less shit scared as whatever it was slinks off. Continue up the path, check out the building, then retire to a small overlook and hole up there for the night, close to where I no longer felt threatened the first time. Wake up in the morning to a beautiful valley filled with mist, dew on the grass, etc feel a lot better. I've never encountered it since, but I always carry a proper knife and my walking staff these days. My axe too, sometimes. Be me. Be an experienced backpacker. Go camping and drive to the campground. Ask for the furthest campsite away from people on the mountain path. Get assigned campsite 7. Go and park at the trailhead. Get out my backpack and begin walking. It is a seven-mile hike to my campsite. Walk and get there, there are boar signs everywhere. Ignore it. Set up a campsite. Nice hammock up, camp chair up, stove ready to cook. Read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Hear twigs snapping and gravel crunching. 
Look around, two other people walking the path. It is two girls, one kinda chubby, the other looks like a meth head. It is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. They don't have backpacks, water bottles, maps, anything. They are actually lost on the trail. They ask for water. I oblige and let them drink one of my two water bottles. I guide them back the proper way with my map. They walked on, and later I asked the ranger, and they said, yeah, they left. Go back to reading my book. Sun is setting, so I start my stove and make a meal. Food is ready. I eat and watch the sun set. Go to sleep in the hammock. Wake up around 1 a.m. to weird noises, rooting and digging noises. Kinda scared, but nature is calling. Get up, hear the scattering of several animals, most likely boars. Go back to sleep. Wake up and pack up and start the trail home. Put my backpack in the car and go home. Honestly, it was a great trip. No idea what those two girls were doing though, it was hot, and they apparently were doing trailer camping. Told them they needed to pack at least water bottles and a map of the area. Be me and my friend. Day after Christmas, we decided we wanted to do a hike to check out a lake he found on Google Maps. Say why not since it's in game lands and we pack up to go there. Stop and get powder and round balls since I got an 1858 for my birthday. Get there and try to load up at the car. Friend says it'll take too long and just wait till we get there. Halfway through the five mile hike, it gets dark. Starts raining JPEG. Hurry it up so we can set up. Almost there and the trail we're on leads to a massive mud hole. We can see a search and rescue chopper with its lights on in the distance, trying to find a way around when we hear howling. Oh shit, dot JPEG. Friend tells me to load up, pouring powder and fumbling around all with haste as Yode calls increase. Friend has his 9mm Rex out already. Once I'm loaded, we start hightailing it out of there. I can't really hear the Yotes anymore and everything hurts. Friend refused to stop out of paranoia. Eventually get to the road. I still can't hear them. See the street sign and realize it's high noon. 44 call round ball dead center. Can't hear shit. Sign wiggling like hell. Make it back to the car, go to the grocery store and buy some ice cream. Sleep like a baby. Thank God I had my six gun or else I wouldn't be writing this. What's up with Americans being this afraid of wildlife? Please enlighten me on what you'd do at night in the rain with a pack of coyotes circling you. Should I ask them for their stalking license first? Coyotes are literally just little puppy dogs and aren't a threat to the average man. I'm pretty sure a woman was killed by some like a few years back, but generally, they're a nothing burger. I knew a homeless drunk who woke up to a pack of yotes trying to eat his guts, showed me some gnarly scars on his abdomen. Personally, I've never had any trouble with yotes or wolves in a woods. They usually just pass by while we eye each other. One time I had a pack of some sort of canines hanging around my tent at night which worried me because I had left my gun at home to catch a plane. Oh, Yode stalked my little brother in Kentucky as the sun was going down when he was about eight or so. Heard him yelling, so I ran down the trail with a machete and twenty-two. They fled when I popped some rounds off. I don't like them because they try to eat my chicken sometimes and start fights with my dogs. Be me two years ago. Twenty-four-year-old, pretty normal, but I'm posting here, so going through a breakup and being stressed out. Nature is my stress relief. I can't sleep, drive to a favorite trail well outside of my city, gonna go for a night hike. At the trailhead, I spend a few hours going up and down the mountain, full moon, so I barely need my headlamp. Summer, so it's very comfortable, it's beautiful. There was one other car in the parking lot, but didn't see anyone the whole time. Come back down to the trailhead around 4 a.m., feel a lot more relaxed, Spot a plastic grocery bag under bush, pick it up cause leave no trace. What? There's a wad of cash in it, rolled up with the rubber band like in Breaking Bad or something. The car is still there but looks empty. Take the bag and go home, count the money, it's like $2400. Don't sleep, immediately deposit it in the morning and put it all into my student loans. That evening I read news that a guy was killed in that parking lot that night. Photos show the same empty car from the lot. The story implies meth-related. Oh great, there was a dead druggie in there. Cops want to talk to person of interest with a car matching mine, but it's a very generic description and no plate info. Just dark SUV, glued to the phone watching for updates for days. Cops eventually arrest some meth-head-looking guy and no more updates. Tell nobody and nothing bad happens. 
have nightmares about the scary guy from no country for old men occasionally for a few weeks. Keep night hiking. Other than that, I never felt unsafe in a woods, usually scarier going to the Walmart after dark. Lifelong outest. Big life changes happen. Having a hard time reconciling things. Decide to take time off and just think about stuff in nature. Also tend to lean toward the extreme and like ascetic practices. Decide to go to the desert. Make sure to bring enough water, sunshade, general basic survival stuff. Go a little light and bland on food. Bring jerky, plain crackers, dates just in case. Have lived in the desert for months before, not worried. Get to the desert. Hot, but beautiful. Set off and hike down a sandstone and basalt canyon through fine sand and sagebrush. The sun beating down on me, but the constant breeze in the canyon feels amazing. A coyote crosses my path. We stop and look at each other for a while. He runs away. A waterfall a few miles in at the end of the canyon can feel the cool mist on my face as I get closer. Stripped down to underwear, shower in a waterfall feels incredible. Hang out for a while, dry off on a rock in the sun. Soak Shema in water and set off. Spotted a mesa up 200 feet of scree leading to the mostly sheer canyon edge, not quite on the level of the surrounding plateau but high off the canyon floor. Great spot to camp. Nobody will mess with me over there either, since it's so hard to get up to. It's a tough climb with a ruck on. I'm tired, but I'll make my way up. Get on Mesa. Wind is whipping up the rocks. Don't feel good, but figure that's just being tired, hungry, and hot. Dismayed to find only small rocks, Takes like an hour to get piles big enough to tie my sunshade down to. The sunshade acts like a sail and is whipping like crazy. Crawl under, decide to rest for a while. Tunnel vision is really bad. Check my water, I've been drinking a ton. Pissing lots, I'm not dehydrated. Wait it out for a bit, I can't catch my breath. My heart is still beating fast. Leg cramps up out of nowhere. But. I drank enough water. Oh no. I realized I didn't eat dinner the night before. I had no food that day, besides coffee, some dates, plain crackers, and smoked meat. So no salt and a ton of water. Remember watching people get fucked up from not eating enough food in a desert? Open up the emergency packet in a pack. No salt or electrolyte. Shit. The car is parked on the other side of the canyon. 20 to 30 foot pillars of basalt between me and the plateau. Can't just climb up and walk over to the car. Take a deep breath to calm down. Pack up carefully, but quickly, fighting panic. Hobble down goat trails. Barely make it to the scree. Carefully make my way down. Resting every few minutes. Trying to get my heart rate down. Make it to the canyon floor. I have to climb a long, steep trail up past the waterfall. Longest walk of my life. Genuinely wonder if I'm going to drop. Make it to the car. Throw ruck in the back. Drive to the nearest gas station in silence. Heart still racing despite AC. Pull into a gas station. Reminds me of the gas station in no country. Walk to the cooler section. Get two bottles of Gatorade's Pedialyte Substitute sipping one on the way to the register. Guy behind counter says, you gotta pay for that, you know. Hand him my card. Ain't a talker, are ye? Sounds like I'm underwater. Shake my head. Get a receipt. Sit in a car, sipping electrolytes with the door open. A small town autistic walks up and starts talking at me. Grunt back. I am his friend now. Distinctly remember thinking, I feel like a hot dog, over and over, while an autistic narrates by sharing Dragon Ball Z lore. Eventually muster, okay, I'm going now. Drive three hours home. At a trailhead in western North Carolina, 
about to go camp on the Appalachian Trail for a long weekend. Almost nobody around cause weekday, not a holiday weekend, just had a Friday off of work, pleasant weather, low 70s, partly cloudy, nothing in forecast. Get about a mile in and see an old guy relaxing against a tree. Looks kind of like woods-themed Santa, big beard, wide brim sun hat, garment that kind of looks like a bathrobe if it was meant for use in a woods. No backpack or anything and smoking a corncob pipe. Before I can say hello or even nod, he says, I wouldn't go up there today, and laughs, big booming voice and laugh. The exact moment he starts laughing, there's a boom of thunder. Tall clouds that I didn't see before. Figure he's either a wizard or an amateur meteorologist mountain man. Tell him that sounds like good advice, go back down, he doesn't follow me. Starts raining like hell the minute I'm back at my car, sit there for a bit. Don't see the old guy come down. Only other two cars in the parking lot also have people in them. Leave and get Chick-fil-A on the way home, then do a shorter hike the next day in a different spot. Thanks, wizard man. Worst backpacking trip of my life. June last year, I decided to go backpacking with a buddy who recently moved back to Colorado after living in California for two years. This buddy is typically experienced in the mountains. We have done winter backpacking trips before. Plan to go for five days, pack a shit ton of food. Packs can't fit at all. Decide to remove our spare stove in favor of more food. We set off for the mountains. Trail starts at 9,000 foot elevation. Day one, we plan on hiking five miles. Half a mile in and he's feeling tired so we already take a break. Keep having to take breaks for him. We assume it's the elevation getting to him. Three miles in at 10,000 elevation trail. Suddenly there is snow. We try to hike through it, and it quickly gets way too deep for us. Turn around, decide to camp right where the snow starts, and figure out a new plan for the remaining days. Start cooking dinner. He's boiling water for rice while I'm cutting a sausage with my back turned a few feet away. Uh, Anon, I think you should see this. The whole stove caught fire. Yell at him to turn the gas off. The second he twists the knob a bit, the whole thing erupts into a massive fireball, and the gas cylinder itself is on fire. Oh, it's gonna explode. Start grabbing armfuls of snow and huck it at the stove. It eventually puts the fire out, and I'm able to twist the gas valve off completely. The water in the pot was still lukewarm from the fireball, so we poured it into our emergency mountain house meals. Proceed to have the worst tasting, semi-cooked, dehydrated food of my life. Decided we'll go back down in the morning, drive to a store for a new camping stove, and then try again at lower elevation. Next morning, while hiking down, he's breathing real hard. We're taking even more breaks than before. His heart is hurting. Oh great, it's elevation sickness. We get down to the car and I drive down in elevation as quick as possible. He's still feeling like death the whole time. Call off the rest of the trip. At Yellowstone trekking on mountain bikes. Behind us is a thunderstorm several hours away according to radar, trying to beat the weather and get a few more miles in. The trail has a river crossing. I think we should stop here. See smoke from a fire further down the river. Decide to investigate. Perhaps camp. Come across a mule and a teepee, two old timers in fox and skunk skin caps and buckskins, asks if we can wait out the storm here. The skunk cap looks behind him at the clouds. I give you half an hour at the most. Best hunker here. Mind if we camp the night? Old timers. Not one bit young bucks. Hunker down and wait her out. Start getting tense out when the fox skin cap old timer suggests we camp away from the riverbank. Do so. Exactly 30 minutes later it's pouring. Get caught in said rain still securing our bikes under our tarp and the sleeping gear. Drenched. Cold. Miserable. Old timer knocks on tent. He's got a wool blanket. A cast iron cauldron of baked beans with bacon chunks and coffee instantly feel better. Rain lets up slightly. Go over to the old man's teepee. Incredibly spacious. Fire ring on the inside. Peak comfy. Talk about fur trade. Jim Bridger, Daniel Boone, Kit Carson and Hugh Glass. The rain stops around midnight. In the morning I see the bank where we were going to set up was six inches underwater. Pack up and depart as old men make coffee and wave us goodbye. Those were the best goddamn baked beans I ever had. I wish this would happen to me. This sounds like it's from a movie. I work with a Canadian and he says that Canadians are pretty horrible to the indigenous population. 
Is this true? Which country isn't? Be me, Australian. My friends and I always go beach camping and we found a spot we haven't been to yet. It looks pretty nice. Surprise, surprise, this weekend, it's meant to rain like 100 millimeters, four inches in one night exactly where we are camping. Get a call from a ranger on the way there and he states the spot is closing down for the weekend due to harsh and muddy conditions and impending rain. Feels bad, man. We found another remote beach camp spot close by. The whole site is empty due to a monstrous rain event. Pisses down on the first night and there is large timber everywhere so we build a fully wooden protective structure with palm leaves and get drunk. The next two days were full sunshine and we spent it driving up the beaches and kicking a football with not a person in sight. Actually, we did see one person on the way in, some lady with her whole car deconstructed. Seats were unbolted and removed from the vehicle and she was scrubbing the chassis whilst her demon spawn kid played with a tire, no rim, and stared at us whilst we drove past. Pretty sure she had just murdered her husband and was cleaning the evidence. Pick related our structure looked like this, but was more structurally sound also without the fence. On my lunch break, I was about to go camping later in the day, but feeling depressed and missing a lot of my old friends. So here's a story when I was far less out inclined and had total fear of failure. Be me 24 years old. I'm 28 years old now. Have a super outdoorsy friend from college that moved back to Vermont for work. He wants to hike the long trail. Unfortunately, I'm poor and have to be a wagey. Ended up buying a house later that year, so worth it. We decided to hike a segment of it. Cool beans, I thought. I don't have to drop several hundred on decent UL gear, so I threw on my old 65 L pack and threw in a nice blanket. A four-person marmot tent, basic food, a flashlight, and threw on an old pair of Timberlands I had. We drive both our cars to the start of the trail near Smug's Notch, and we parked his car by some trail 20 or 30 miles away. Park, get out and start hiking. Make it halfway, and notice my bag starts ripping. Screw it, I say. Figure we can keep going until we reach the lean-to. Realize I was totally unprepared for this. My bag weighs twice as much as my friends. I have no trekking poles, and my feet are killing me. We get to the shelter and I assess the damage. The whole side where the shoulder straps are on is totally frayed. Pick related. Spend the remaining two hours of light sewing my bag up and end up making it look semi-respectable. Here my friend started swearing. He turned the corner from the lean-to and he broke the vodka bottle we brought for the next two days. Turns out the idiot had it facing forwards the outside of the bag and he whacked it on a branch breaking the neck off. Fortunately, there's still about half the vodka still in the remaining bottle, so we sacrifice a bottle of water to hold the remaining. Drink some vodka, sleep, and have a good night. Look at the countryside and actually feel pretty good. Fast forward to the next day. Wake up groggy and not comfortable. Sleeping pad was not all that. Walk about three miles. My bag breaks. Have duct tape the only saving grace. Duct tape wrap my bag multiple times and get it to hold. Continue walking. Make it to the next spot camp and have a good time. Fast forward another day. Pick related is the trail. A windstorm came a week prior, and all the trees fell over creating an absolute maze. Last day, and at this point I want to end things due to the gear failure. Shoes are falling apart now too. I have to tape them as well. Sweating like a whore in church, I continue to wrap my shoes. Friend tells me that we're only three miles back to the car. Uneventful descent ran into a few through hikers, and we chit-chat nothing serious. Get to the gap and can see his car. We smell and look terrible. We get in the car, turn the ignition, and the batteries are dead. We both laugh at this and spend the remainder of the afternoon flagging down cars with the hood open. Fortunately, a Jeep bro looking like he was kitted out for overland camping gave us a jump and we went on our merry way. He drops me off at my car. We stop at a gas station for some fuel. Take a red bag and throw it in the trash along with most of the cheap gear in it. Make it home and order a Kelty backpack and real shoes. Camping has never been better now. Camping a day's walk from the start of the trail at Blackheath in the Blue Mountains. The end of summer, so it's still hot. Open my second water container. Still in a drought at this point, so I'm starting to think of all the people that perished walking down here over the years. They usually the sort to come down with thongs and a snicker, so I'm probably fine. The next day I'm still thinking of heading back if I can't find some water to boil. 
walk about three hours with the intent to pack it in at lunch if I can't find some water to at least boil. Trail is rough, no signs it's been used in years, might not even be a trail. See an old tin shed right up against the cliff? Figure it might be an old miner's shed or something. Chain shut but the wood is so delicate that the doors come open with nearly no resistance when I was testing it. It's a cave that goes right into the side of the cliffs. This is good because everyone knows cave water is the best thing you can drink. Have a decent headlamp and backup torch, so there is no chance that I'll get lost and die like in the catacombs. About 50 meters into the cave there's a sharp drop and an old pitted iron ladder. Test it out and it's solid like the cave has grown around it over the years. Can't see the bottom, it's an awkward squeeze to get onto the ladder. Start climbing down. And down. Feels like the longest ladder in the world and get a touch of vertigo when I realize how deep the hole was. Take a pick related to my backup spotlight. It felt a lot longer when I was on it. The cave opened up a bit at this point, so I made my way down. Stalactites and intricate lattice formations as far as the eye can see. Notice that's farther than my dim headlight should allow. Turn it off. There's a light source down here. From around the curve of the path ahead, there is a definite green glow and a faint sound. Doesn't look like it's just the other side of the cave, and daylight, it's moving. It's moving in this direction. Working four months, fixing a water plant bridge. I work days and fish every free time I get even the coffee breaks, while living in a tent and working in a trailer and cottages along the river. Eat mainly fish and my only work friend sometimes shoots us some bird for dinner. One day, a local drunk shows up with a boat and starts fishing in the illegal area below the dam and gets pissed off because we saw him. Comes ashore and starts swinging his knife but is too drunk. Swears he will come back soon with a gun. A workmate calls the cops. Enjoy the rest of the out summer in peace and quiet. A year later I have to go stand a witness to his trial. A year after that, on the other side of the country, I ran into a few drunken idiots on a stream. We sit and drink the evening away. Drunk men mention their friend who lost his guns because of some damn construction worker back at home and what they would do to him. Heartily agree, dot JPG. Share last drinks and quickly fuck off into the night. I still live with my mother. She knows I like to go out always asking me when is the next time I'm going, where I'm going, what I plan on doing. Haven't been in forever though, just couldn't work up the energy. Tells me she heard of a Facebook group nearby that is hosting a hiking trip. Just show up, bring your own gear, etc. Day of the trip. Show up at the beginning of the trail where they said they were going to meet. There is one woman standing there looking around. Ask her if she was there for the trip. She tells me she is a regular member of the Facebook group. Apparently, there was a lot of drama a few days before and she didn't know if anyone was going to show up. The main guy was a crackhead and beat his girlfriend unofficial wife who was also a member and a different guy who had a crush on her, said he was going to kill the guy if he saw him on the trail. The other people in the group were steering clear since they didn't want to be in the middle of a homicide, get the inkling that maybe I shouldn't have gone on this trip. The girl asks me if I would like to hike anyways and says it would be a waste of a trip if we don't. Why the hell not? I need to get moving anyways. She says it'll be just the two of us. While hiking, she keeps saying stuff like, people won't know what you're doing 10 feet from the trail as long as you're quiet, and various other things alluding to sex. Smart enough to pick up on the hints, too autistic to capitalize. I have the subtlety of a porn ad, so instead of flirting back, I just walk silently other than saying, hmm, and really, just wishing that she makes the first move. She says she forgot to bring water, offer to let her drink mine. She starts licking the mouth of the bottle. Get weirded out because she is getting her saliva all over my water. Indiscreetly put away the bottle without drinking from it. She gives up on flirting entirely. Goes silent and just walks. Finish the hike and get back to the start. Ask her if she would like to get food with me. To replenish energy, of course. Look anon, you're nice and all, but you missed your chance. Ask what she means. She tells me that she has a thing for having relations in the woods specifically near where people walk so she gets the thrill of possibly being caught. I don't feel like walking a mile back into the woods just to get you a second chance to get with me. So goodbye. 
I just think that if she was this blunt while we were walking, we wouldn't have this issue. It's my fault, though, so I just turn around and walk away. Get home and my mother asks how it went. Tell her nobody was there, so I just hiked by myself. Don't lie to me, Anon. I know a woman's hair when I see one. Pulls a hair off of my shoulder. Tell her the story. She calls me an idiot and goes back to watching Family Feud. I'll recant a full trip which was one of my more memorable solo trips. Go in a wood solo, state campsite. Hour hike to my campsite, couple horse flies but not too bad for a couple miles back country. Set up camp, nothing crazy. Rained hard on the drive up. Was staying at a legal campsite at a state forest, didn't have any dry wood. Areas picked fairly clean of shit on the ground, no dry wood within, didn't bring anything more than tinder. Used my Bunsen burner of a liquid stove for cooking, still didn't have the friend campfire. Make food, read until bedtime. Oh cool, the adjacent swamps have fireflies. Single at the time, I really, really wished I had a GF to share the romance with. Go to bed, still no comfy cozy fire, still salty about it several years later. Breeze wiggles tent, no big deal. Wake up and hear a crack some hours later. Crack, fucking crack anon, get the fuck up. A beaver, woodchuck, or some other rodent running away like he stole some car keys in my direction. Writhing a dead excuse for a tree wobbling in the direction of said rodent. Crack again, motherfucker. Tree lands about two feet. Half a meter for you international types. From my tent. Can't sleep the rest of the night. That was not far from killing me, all things considered. Like it would spoil out if I cared about myself. Make a half-hearted attempt at reading my book until the sun comes up. Start walking back to the car. There are about a thousand times the number of horseflies from the hike in. They like to bite. A lot. Finally get back to the car, already seeing my skin bump up from fly bites like it's leprosy. Anyway, all said and done, it was an 8 out of 10 experience, and I've actually camped at that same state forest since. I think ultimately this is actually one of the great things about going out and going alone, not the near-death experience with the Widowmaker. Screw that. But just the time to appreciate shit and have some solitude to reflect, even if it's yearning or dissatisfaction, I think it's just elegant and healthy. Glad you didn't die, Anon, but glad you got to see that cool shit like the fireflies and even the rogue beaver. My story, be me, living in my rural redneck hometown for a couple years while between things, really into camping, nature photography, field recording. One summer night, I decided to record the wildlife at a swamp in a 1,000-acre nature reserve a few miles down the road. Hop on my mountain bike. Huff down there just at twilight. Lock my bike to a tree and take my pack of gear into the woods. Dark and spoopy. No moon at all this night. Hike about 30 minutes through the reserve until I get to the swamp. Hastily set up all my recording gear at the edge of the swamp. So full of frogs and crickets and insects and beavers and birds, perfect. Once it's recording, it's basically completely dark out. Hike about 15 minutes away from the recorder so I don't interfere with any wildlife. Get to the big rock, a giant boulder about the size of a single car garage. Scuttle up the side and sit atop to just wait in silence. Want to get at least an hour plus recording. It's dark, I can't see my hand in front of my face. Looking up through the trees, I can see a few stars peeking through. That's it. After about 30 minutes or so, I get bored. Pull out a ciggy. Flick my lighter. There's a big lion face right in front of me. Hiss! It runs away, crashing through the woods. A mountain lion was skulking up the boulder about to neck me. Turn all my lights on and book it back to the recorder pack up as fast as I can. Still takes like 45 minutes before I get back to my bike. Horrified I'm being stalked the whole time. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.